Good morning, everyone. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion and your old pal Jaw. It rained here last night, so I don't know if we're going to be able to take Jaw out for his daily park routine or not. I'm going to go out and basically he makes that decision. From the moment we walk outside, if it's too wet on the ground, he will basically just turn around and come back in. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I have a a little bit of a vlog plan today, but I want to show you when I came home, I had a few packages waiting, so let's open them up and see what they are. Oh, and Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, you didn't burn the house down, so thanks for that. If you had any wild parties, I sure can't tell, guys. All right, one of these I ordered, and one of them is from Merch 5, my merch company that makes all my shirts, so let's see what they sent me. Well, the first thing I opened was uh, Nudie's was having a Black Friday sale, so I went ahead and bought a Nudie shirt. I would have loved for it to have been in black, you know, like negative of this, but uh, that's all they had was in gray, so I had to get it. All right, Merch 5 hooked it up. That's the best thing about, well, there are a lot of great things about changing over to them, but the best is that they send me my own stuff for free. But yeah, they have the uh, Hollywood sign style Jordan the Lion beanie for this uh, cold weather we were just in. See what else we got here. We've got the new Joster t shirt of that guy. And they sent me a blue version of the Been There Vlog That shirt with uh, Ja Breck and I on it. Isn't that a great concept? Look, Breck's head in that screen. <laughs> Look at Ja. Classic. These guys are killing it. And he also sent me an email saying that he sent something else that's on its way, so that probably will show up tomorrow. Well, let's hope Silver Lake Park isn't a swamp land today. Hello again, Shakespeare Bridge. It's been a while. Wow, that looks like smoke in the distance. I mean, it's there's a ton of it. There's the chandelier tree. Now I'm really glad that I vlogged that because I read online that they're no longer lighting it up anymore. There's a little dog here that looks like Jaw. Well, we see dogs crisscrossing, but Jaw's not one of them. There he goes, there he goes. You know, one surefire cure for boredom, Jaw, is to go play. Aren't you gonna get chased? Go let him chase you, bud. So when Jaw gets done playing, what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna take you guys over to what's considered to be like the birthplace or the very first theater in the start of like the LA theater movement. And it was actually started with the use of Charlie Chaplin's prop house, his prop department. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, we're out of here. Well, we're heading into Hollywood. I gotta hit the post office, get some stamps, mail a few things out, and we're gonna head over and do the vlog. It's actually gonna have two components to it. One is the theater that I mentioned, but also there's a Marilyn Monroe connection between that and something else, and we'll kind of talk about that as well. They changed the automated machines that I used to use, and now they're like, they take twice as long to use, so. There's no real way to save time here anymore. Plus, I have to go up to the window because I need international stamp, so. Yeah. This is easily the least fun thing I do in all of Hollywood. Surprisingly, that wasn't all that bad of an experience. I have to come in here for uh, something I'm gonna be doing in the future. All right, cool. So I had placed an order online a few hours ago and um, they had confirmed it on the website but didn't send me an email. So I just wanted to check and see if they got the order and if the format was okay. And they actually said I can come by in like half an hour and pick it up. So I'll show you what it is and what I'm doing with it 
um, all the people that bought uh, the new Merch 5 merch, like the shirts like this, um, that sent me a photo by the 1st of December, I'm sending them out one of these. Now here you can see we are on Santa Monica Boulevard, what's called Theater Row. And until where we're going today, in 1946 was started, there was no theater movement in Los Angeles. It's said that before the Circle Theater, there were only showcases and traveling road shows. Well, in 1946, a group of UCLA graduates started forming an acting group inside of one of their friend's living room. When they thought they had something, they sought out this location, which was a corner grocery store at the time. Nobody was using it, or it had been a formerly a neighborhood grocery store. Sidney Chaplin, the son of Charlie Chaplin, found this place, they moved in, and they put on their first performance of The Adding Machine. Now what's interesting about this location is like I said, there was no theater to speak of in Los Angeles outside of just showcases. And so they started doing these productions and the group originally consisted of Sidney Chaplin, um, Kathleen Freeman, the great William Schallert, who I know from um, the Patty Duke show. He was in Inner Space, he was on the Torkelsons. I think he had like a 60 year career too. They used to put on uh, performances here. So the second one they did was called The Time of Your Life, put on that performance here, and Sidney Chaplin was in that performance at the time he was dating an actress named Marilyn Monroe. Now what's fascinating about that story is that Marilyn Monroe used to come here and see the performances, and every time she would come here, she would comment to someone, uh, Shelley told me this story, and it was recounted in various books that she would walk out here and look across the street and say, that's the orphanage that I grew up in. And she was right. From 1935 to 1937, off and on, she would live in this orphanage across the street. Now, this theater has been a theater, well now it's not. It, they actually recently, very recently renovated it. Um, it had been, over time, a theater for five or six different companies and the original Circle Theater, when they were there, they also took over this space which since 1915 up until that point had been Charlie Chaplin's prop house. Um, later on, um, after he had not been using it for a little while, it became a short-lived auto garage and then they took it over, built a second stage in there and it became known as the Chaplin stage. And also, when Sidney Chaplin would be in the time of your life here, this was the first time that his father, Charlie Chaplin, ever saw him perform inside those doors. Now the reason I say that Shelley mentioned this to me is because her sister Blanche was actually married to the man that ran the theater at the time in 1946. And so she and Marilyn used to come here and watch the performances together. Shelley would eventually get involved with this and do a number of comedies here. A number of the shows that they would do here throughout the 40s and 50s would eventually, um, that cast and that production would end up on Broadway. Now it was said that Sidney Chaplin was able to talk his father into letting them use uh, the props from his prop house. And so they said there were often um, scenes in their productions that contained pillow fights and things like that and actually Charlie Chaplin Jr. would be in productions here as well. Now one of the funny stories that I read was that they said after their productions each night, sometimes um, Sidney Chaplin or William Shallert and Kathleen Freeman would all come out here on the sidewalks and they would um, put on a performance for the orphans across the street. They would, um, it would, they said it would end up with usually William Shallard or Sidney Chaplin chasing Kathleen Freeman up and down the sidewalk as the kids up here would watch. Now what's interesting about this is, like I said, this was where Marilyn Monroe unfortunately had to live for a portion of her life. Her mother ended up having a mental breakdown. When her mother couldn't care for her, she asked her best friend Grace to watch after little Norma Jean. Um, Grace would watch her for the better part of a year, and Grace actually was working for Columbia Pictures. Um, she fell on hard times and couldn't support Norma Jean 
and eventually had to bring her here. And they said that throughout the time that she was here, it was roughly the better part of 16 months to two years that she was here going to live with nine different foster families. Now, one of the things that um, was quoted in different books was that Norma Jean used to look out the windows with the 26 other girls here, look down the alley and look at what was the RKO water tower. Now we're looking with that same view that she had down the same alley and seeing what is now the Paramount Tower because Paramount bought the studio since RKO. And she said that she would always look out there and think of her mother because her mother was a film editor for RKO. And she also said that she would dream into the Hollywood sky and say that she hoped someday to be a star knowing that there must be millions of other lonely girls out there making the same wish. But she said she wasn't worried because she said she was wishing harder than them. So those would have been the windows she would have been looking out at, looking down that alley. And at the time it was known as the Los Angeles Orphans Home Society, but it later became known as Hillgrove. And they still have the Hillgrove sign here now. Now I'm going to see if I can get in because what I've read online is that they have a hallway here, like a hallway museum type thing, dedicated to Marilyn Monroe. It's no longer an orphanage, it's now known as Uplift Family Services at Hollygrove. Well, they were not only nice enough to let me come in and take a look at a few things, they were also telling me that they honor Marilyn's memory here by not only having a Norma Jean Gala every year, but the, um, they also do um, toy drives and everything, and they said that they right now have been getting tons of donations from the Norma Jean Fan Club, and everyone that loves Marilyn helps keep this place, you know, thriving and, and flourishing. This was actually the lunchroom of the orphanage when Norma Jean Baker went here, or lived here, and they're also going to show us that hallway, and they're also going to show us where her bedroom was. Now here you can see they're getting ready to have the Norma Jean Gala, and one of the guests will be Ike Barinholtz, who is an actor, comedian, director. He did some of the Mindy Project, and he used to be on The League. Now what they were telling me is that this is the same building, however, it's been kind of um, reconstructed for different purposes over time but this right here in front of us was the location of where Norma Jean Baker's room was. Now what's interesting about it is when you come in here and you take the turn into the office and you look out the window you can see exactly what about that story I was telling you. You can see the alleyway that she would have looked at. You can see the Paramount Tower that used to be the RKO Tower. Wow, it really makes it real, doesn't it? So also, if you look out this window, you can actually see the two theaters, the Circle Theater right there on the corner, as well as what would become the Chaplain Stage right there. So here's the hallway I was telling you about, and they actually take it all the way back to the foundation of the orphanage in 1880. And as you follow along, you see it became Holly Grove. And one of the things that they showed me that I thought was really interesting was that once we get down here, you can see they were granted a lot of land that was three and a half acres. And as the uh, woman showing me around, Kathleen told me, she said, you can see that Hollywood literally sprouted up around them. They were here already and Hollywood kind of sprang up. Now right here, as we go a little further along, is the tribute to Marilyn. Now here you can see it says, while still a young girl at nine years of age, in 1935, Norma Jean Baker was years away from becoming screen legend Marilyn Monroe. She was not, however, without thoughts of stardom as she often gazed from her dorm room at Holly Grove across to the water tower at neighboring RKO, today Paramount Studios, and dreamed of one day walking through the gates as an actress. Now, like I mentioned, they said that uh, during the time that she was here, um, that would have been her, the area in which her room would have been. You can see even a young picture over there. But they said that now they honor her memory and people that love Marilyn are constantly contributing to the organization here. And so if you're interested, go ahead and contact them here. I'll give you the information and um, 
they don't take any of the money out for any reason and they said that they uh, every year do a big birthday celebration in honor of Marilyn as well as at Christmas time which is right now many many people have been dropping off gifts and they do a program where families can come and select Christmas presents and here are a lot of the Christmas presents that people have dropped off so generously and as I was mentioning they keep Marilyn's memory alive with great photos inside the lobby well how about that how cool of them they were telling me this is no longer an orphanage this is more of a family services center so they're able to help hundreds of families um, instead of you know maybe just 60 children at a time they're actually able to get better results this way and you know when I told them what we were doing trying to keep the history alive and everything they said they've just they've been so blessed over time with uh, Marilyn Monroe fans helping this place and making contributions that have helped everyone else that um, they were more than happy to show me everything and um, and help you guys to see it so if you feel inclined um, definitely get in contact with them and make a contribution if you can now it's amazingly generous of people to make those contributions but I think in the long run it really speaks volumes about the effect that Marilyn Monroe has had on people that so many people love her so much that they want to give back to um, an organization that helped her so much and a building that helped her so much so now we can accurately say that it was that area right there that Marilyn would have looked out now we're gonna pop into Office Depot buy a few markers and then go pick up the photos. Now this is the Vine Street School and this is the school that Marilyn would have attended when she lived there. Yeah, I learned a long time ago, if you're looking for Sharpies in Hollywood, this is the place to go. And I wanna make these things look pretty snappy. Yeah, right here's what you want. These are usually pretty good, but this might be a little big, so I'm gonna get like two different sizes. Okay, maybe not, they're out of the small ones, so I'm only gonna be able to get the bigger ones, I guess. We'll go with that. Yeah, we got a ton of stuff to do today, guys. They should have them ready by now. Oh yeah, take a look. They did a great job here at Copy Mat. Cool, they knocked it out of the park. Now let's go hit Trader Joe's. I'm out of groceries. And then after this, I might try and get a haircut. And I do like coming to this one just because it's themed after the old Coconut Grove and the Ambassador Hotel. See, the Jojo Nut Grove. I think that'll do it. String cheese is for jaw. And there's a little Marilyn Monroe homage inside here even. Hope to see you real soon. Okay. Hey there, fella. Hi. So I just went to the store and got you some string cheese. You want it? You want the string cheese? Oh yeah, oh yeah, who's the hero now, huh? All right, I'm hard at work. I'm filling them all out so I can mail all these out. I just wanted to give you a little heads up. If you remember way back when I filmed the vlog at the Viper Room and we got to go all the way through the Viper Room because my friend Sam Tripoli was filming his comedy special. Well, they actually released it and they broke it into two parts. The first part has come out. So a lot of people when I posted that vlog said, keep us you know, updated so we can see the special since that was basically a behind the scenes so um i can't i can only say half the name of the special but go on uh, vimeo.com v-i-m-e-o.com and type in sam tripoli zero f word <laughs> and he said that in the middle of december the second half is going to be released so um it's a great director it's a guy who's done tons and tons of famous music videos and um, the special's great. Sam did a great job, and it's really funny. So if you wanted to see more um, and see how that whole vlog that we filmed turned out later that night, you can see it there. Have a great night, everyone. See you all tomorrow. Goodbye.